Vintage Hango one here coming at you with <laughs> another video. <laughs> right, this one, um, this is a this is just a brief one really. Um, it's uh, Scott over uh, the other side of the pond. Uh, he's asked for something Pacific um, for uh, carrying. I think it's his bullets and cat, uh, that sort of stuff. Like obviously he didn't go into de great detail. Um, but he wanted uh, he wanted something that he could carry it all in one place. Obviously he didn't want a, a snap connector on it because it would make too much noise. Obviously it's for hunting or something. Um, so I said, well leave it with me and I'll knock something up. Now I didn't know if he wanted separate compartments. So I did ask him, look, just uh, knock up a quick drawing so I've got some idea what you want. I sent him some pictures of stuff I had made and um, he said, yeah, the one in the bottom right hand corner, that will that will be fine. So I've done that, and he, but he did specify he wanted it 5 inches by 7 inches, which I've done. Um, the back of it is all hide, but the front is grade leather. Excuse me, I, I ain't been able to catch that cat. This is what you call designer stubble now. Uh, we've gone into that mode now. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, here it is, say no more, here it is here. And um, that's that's what he wanted, something like that. He wanted that on the top, so I've stamped that on there. Now these uh, these clasp, the, these are what you call um, mulberry. Uh, they're a mulberry clasp that go on uh, the mulberry handbag for women. You know, designer ones. You know, top notch and money stuff like you know. <laughs> but we don't go there. Uh, and on the back, he wanted a belt strap. Um, to slide his belt through so I've just put that on the back there for that just to give it take the plainness away um, you will get oh, you get about a two and a half inch belt in there so you ain't got to worry about whether your belt's going to fit so um, there you go uh, there you go Scott I, uh, I hope you like it I'll be sending it off to you um, when I get an answer from you or something I've forgot your address so can you you know, email me with your address and postcode, please, mate. Um, and I, um, obviously a small payment. I know, I, well, I know it's about £12 postage over there, so all I want is my postage money for you, mate, because you've been a good pal to me, and uh, so that's all I'm asking for. Um, I'm hoping to try and get uh, some monies in from people that's ordered stuff. I've got influx of wasps just lately, I don't know why, they seem to like my, it might be because I've got a beer on the go, talking of which, got a lovely roast dinner coming today, oh indoors, brilliant cook, right, moving on from there, um, and so it's only a brief one, I've got, got some little notes here, I've already sent a video out once like and then uh, then I'll put it up on Facebook but I'm still getting no response. Now I've had someone from Finland, they responded yesterday, they wanted a uh, lead, uh, slip lead and collar. Uh, I sent her details, she sent it and paid already. Well I had one made, I had two made but these people they're not coming forward with their address or the money so she's over in Finland so that's going off Monday morning she'll be happy about that uh, I've got a chap here who's this chap here he's only just uh, he's only just put the order in for another slip lead uh, no that, that, that's a missus she's right up in Scotland so I'm hoping um, she'll be sending I've sent an email so she can be sending some money down or something but it doesn't go, as you all know, it, it don't go unless payment's made. That's for uh, Denise. That's all I'm going to say. It's for Denise. You know who you are. Your postcode is DG71QW. That's all I'm going to say. So, um, day protection and all that, you know. The other one is Max Grip Max. Nearly, nearly said the surname then, didn't I? SW12, this is the second time I've called you out, 8ST, you wanting two dummies, well they're made, they're just sitting here waiting to be bagged up and sent off mate, just waiting payment again. 
Kate. That's all I've got. Kate here. She wants a slip collar. Um, no information, no address, no payment. I can't do nothing. Hands are tied. I've got to get some more leather um, and hide uh, this weekend, but I don't like to pester him on a Sunday. I do it Monday morning and, and use it about midday when he tells me to go up there. It's only 60 mile away. 16. <laughs> Julie. That's all I've got here. Julie. You want a slip leading collar. Uh, well, it does help to have your dress and payment would be uh, gratefully received. That's Julie. No idea where you are, girl. Sorry. And the last one is Mark with a K, with a C, not a K. He wants a slip collar and a walking lead. Uh, and I would like your dress and I would also like <laughs> some money. <laughs> Give me a address with you or an email or something so I can contact you. This is the only way I can do it at the moment. I've got no phone number, nothing. So I can't contact one, two, three. There's three of you I can't contact. I've got no phone number. So my hands are tied. Right, so there you go. Without further ado, that's that right out of the way. Now these here... I'll show you how I trim some of these up. Now, there's always a, there's always been a um, a little um, what's the word? A little saying in the trade that you don't let them know everything, um, which I've always done all through my life. And Chris, that's Chris up to me, mate. He's of the same opinion. You don't tell them everything, uh, otherwise, before you know where you are. Everyone else is doing it and you're getting nothing. No, you're getting no uh, custom or anything. So I always keep a little bit uh, back myself. Always have done all on my saddlery stuff. And uh, all right, some of the you know, the bosses who are with, I don't like it. But I'm saying, well, you know, I've got to have something. I've got to have a bit of ammunition should I need it. Um, and uh, But because he was unfair to me and everything else and sour grapes on his part, I thought, oh, I'm not going to let you into the trade secrets, you know, calls himself a saddler. Pfft, he's been at it five minutes and he couldn't do this and he couldn't do that. And I thought, yeah, I know where you're coming from, mate. <laughs> been there, worn the shirt and gone round again. <laughs> anyway, so I keep stuff back. I don't I don't say it all. Um, now you know why. Now, I tried to get a foot from my machine here. It's a, um, it's a Seco. Oh, it's a big beast is. I think you've seen it in previous videos. Now, that's a normal foot. That one there, that's the normal foot. Um, I've narrowed the two toes down. So I've got a very narrow window. The, the slit in there is, is where the needle goes through. Um, I can see the work better. I can get closer to the edge of the work. But I've had... They wanted, I inquired about a foot, piping foot that is, and I'll show you it properly in a minute. The chap I got the machine for, he quoted me £85. He said, that's if I can get one. I thought, well, if you're not sure if you can get one, how are you quoting me the money, the price? In the end, I had to grab the, oh, excuse me, grab the ball by the horns. <laughs> or the moose by the horns. <laughs> for you lot over there <laughs> and I, I, I had to go I made one myself right so this is what I've had to come up with um, I've had to put the foot on, oh I can't see myself there I put a plate on that side that runs because the uh, moving feet go under there to move the uh, to push the material through to feed it through and on this side I've had to do the piping foot which is that one there. So that's what you see when it's coming at you. Let's get it in the camera right. That's what you see. So it goes on the machine. So you're looking at the back end of it now. And it goes on the machine. And it produces that. It sits on this piping. 
run and stitches around here as we go around like this. Just keep stitching and stitching till you get to the end. Um, this is the uh, the latest um, collars we do. The latest clips are blah, blah. I thought I had one somewhere. Now I've used it. Well, you've seen the latest clips. They don't have a swivel on. That's why I've gone to this idea. This is a swivel. This swivels. So it doesn't matter because the other one, when it didn't swivel, funny enough, and a customer showed me a brief video, he says, look, it's kind of clipped from the ring. I thought, how the hell's that done that? But he showed it close up, went like that, he went, look, and it just come undone. I thought, I ain't having that. I said, send it back and I'll, um, so he sent it back and I sent another one up there, uh, the, the, new, the new design one. So that's what we're at with at the moment. Uh, right, I ain't going to wrap it on no more. I'm just going to show you a bit of how I treat this and then after I've done that, um, you'll get the general idea. So, bear with me. Let's turn the camera a little bit and we'll have a go at it. Right, now you've got to cut this really close to this stitching. All right. So first we start with this, and um, I've got to make sure I'm still in camera shot because what happens is I take it out of camera shot. We go along there like this, very close to this stitching, because the idea is this ring should run along this, this edge, it shouldn't run along the round bit, the round bit is to go against the dog's neck so it doesn't chafe him. We go down here like that. I tend to turn this up a bit so that um, cause scissors they cut they don't cut directly in line. Because you remember they're um shearing it off. That's what scissors do, they shear stuff off when they're cutting it. So just go along here like this. I might just show it all then then you can see it. Then after this we put a bit of um, uh, balm on, leather balm, just to, um, just making sure I'm in shot, that's all, uh, protect it, especially on this edge here, and then all I've got to do on these is just put the old stopper on it, and that is a point I wanted to mention last time. When using these, you must use the stopper once you put it on the dog's head. And for the obvious reasons, which you probably know, but I'm going to have to say it anyway. When the dog gets on the, on the, um, on the spot where you've sent it, the head goes down for hunt, in hunting mode. 9 out of 10. Unless they've seen it. If they put the head down for hunting mode, and you haven't put the stopper up to the ring... What happens? Head goes down, collar comes off the dog's neck, and then suddenly uh, you're looking for your collar and your lead. I'm thinking, well, I've only just got that, and now I've lost it. And that has happened with uh, one person. They done that all because they didn't put the stopper down. I, you know, I said, I asked them, well, did you put the stopper up to the ring? Uh, no, I don't think I did. I went, well. <laughs> That's what it's on there for, is to prevent that from happening. But, as you, uh, as we all know, you can take the horse to water, you can't make it drink. So, I'm going to put this, I think I'm going to put this one under bushcraft actually. Um, I don't know, I might put it under bushcraft or uh, gun dog. Ooh training gun dogs. Anyway, there it is, I've got another one to do now, that's all trimmed off now. All we've got to do, you see it there, look. I'll bring it up close, so, so, hopefully, so you can see it. Okay, so when you pull this ring up, this ring goes against that like that. Let's see if we can see it. See, it slides along there. It shouldn't be sliding this way. This is wrong slides on that one 
See that way you've got the dog's neck in here. Oh, let's bring it back a bit. Dog's neck in there. And it's nice and smooth against the dog. It doesn't hurt the um, larynx and anything like that. So I've just got to put the stoppers on these. And then, um, then Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. Let's just move that back round a bit. Oh dear. So there it is, all done. No more to be said than uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheerio.